Hi, I am in this beautiful setup here. I'm vacationing in a lake house. A friend of mine allowed us to use this for the week and I thought that I'd show you her garden. There are two types of garden that I want to talk to you about because even if it's a small garden, they may be completely different. There is a suburban urban garden that is designed inward many times and then there is a house that is designed outward where it has a gorgeous view that you have to make your main focal point and at the same time figure out how to make your space feel really cozy and intimate and not completely open to the elements so i am going to show you a few things that you may want to think about and show you her beautiful property here it is full time so it's not at full splendor but it's absolutely still gorgeous so if you want to learn more about designing a small garden go ahead and keep watching As you begin to think about design, think of design with the outdoor-indoor connection. Making coffee, walking through your house, what are you looking at? What is the feeling that you want to create? How does being outdoors make you feel in order to bring that into your home? The experience doesn't begin at the door. It begins as you start walking through the home, making your coffee, your breakfast you immediately want to create a kind of connection that is unforgettable. One of the most valuable things they ever did on this home was add a nano wall. These are excellent sliders that open the whole house to the exterior. You immediately create that indoor door connection that is unforgettable. Their deck, it is so well laid out. Even the height of it in reference to the ground, it connects really well. You can see the nano wall, how it connects immediately to the outdoor. And when you're sitting there in the summer, it is just incredibly beautiful. So relaxing, a perfect place to eat, work, or just hang out. A feature that they really thought about, and I absolutely love, is that they created a little nook, kind of hidden from the rest of the space. And the way they did it is connected, but you can see that it's lower. That whole area, as you approach it, you go down the steps. And just those couple of steps make a big difference to create a really cozy area. This past summer when I was here, this was my favorite spot. You can see how it's just so well laid out. Just a tiny bit of difference creates magic. The connection doesn't stop at the deck to the living room. They have created rooms that are all glass and they have sliding doors that open to the deck. When designing, always be clear on what your style is. If it is casual like the one I showed you or even this home right on the lake is very formal, completely different. It has a very formal barrier between the private areas of the home and nature, the lake. Unlike the one that I'm at, it is extremely informal and it goes very softly into different phases. From private to semi-private to the more public area that's exposed to what is happening. But you can see that as they do it, it still creates a really cozy environment to hang out and live in the space. The private zone would be the deck. It's higher up 
but it's still private because it's attached to your home. As you look down from the deck, you can see the semi-private area has the steps that begin to connect that zone to the more public beach area. And then your public beach area is your beach, but it still feels super cozy. It's open, exposed, but it's so connected because it's right there by the water that it feels super comfortable and not exposed. One thing about designing when you're really having to design outward is to look at the details. The little things is what makes a big difference. And I'm going to show you one that is my favorite that they've done. And it's how they treated their slabs, their concrete slabs on their decks that made them blend into nature. Let's take a look because I think this detail, if you're designing a lake house or something that's in nature, maybe a mountain house, you are going to love and maybe something that you use in your own property. Do you notice what is happening with the decks? They're almost floating in the air. They are completely incorporated into the land itself. They did amazing doing this. It really reflects back to the roof line so that when they have the private zone above, even though it's higher, it feels the scale feels right. So you don't feel exposed. The lines themselves are created by floating slabs. Look at these. They're so nice. You can see how it is linear and then the roof line is linear. It kind of creates this box. So it breaks the scale of the openness of the space. And it runs from one end to the other. I want to show you exactly how they did it and get a little closer so that you see it. But look how much space there is between that slab and it's pretty nice and thin looking in weight. It doesn't look really heavy. And as you start looking, they just allow greenery to grow below and looking underneath, it has all this moss growing on it. It tapers back and the actual support, the structure is well beyond on the back of it. They did this all through the perimeter. Look how beautiful that is. They're Greenery is not formal and just totally planned. It looks like it's been there for ages. Absolutely beautiful design detail that I think makes a big difference on how you experience the space and the connection to nature. One of the best things that she has done is that she has really incorporated her personality into the property. Even though this home is super modern, it has a warmth. And part of the warmth is that what she loves to do, like she likes to explore, she has brought into the details that she has incorporated as she walks throughout the property. Let me show you my favorite one. There's so many things I love about this property and how it was designed. And one of them is that she collects driftwood. So whatever comes ashore, she brings them in. And she has just created this beautiful collage of what she experiences in the space. She not only has succulents and moss and different things growing on it that makes it blend so seamlessly with the space, but she brings crystals and whatever she collects on sea glass or stones from the beach, she places them there. She has seashells and all the things, feathers, things that she finds. And every time I come here, I'm mesmerized just looking to see what else she has added to this little corner. She has really found an excellent way to use the driftwood, doesn't waste any of it. And one is that she takes the driftwood from one end all the way to the other end where the steps to go into the private zone so you're uh, she's introducing the semi-private zone with the driftwood so you see it aligns and it continues all the way to kind of guiding you as to where to go to find the path i love this i think it's really just personal it has her personality in it and i love the detail of the different scales of the driftwood such an easy thing to do but it really just connects the whole modern with the organic and cozy feel of the space.
she loves growing flowers but they're not like all over the place she has them in strategic places and here it is just the edge of where her property starts and it delineates the public area and the more semi-private that transitions into the private and she grows dahlias they look absolutely stunning she has done a really nice job. I love the colors and she has dahlias and roses and I'll go through them so you can see some of the things that she has managed to grow. And here we are in October and they're still flourishing. She uses container garden to go ahead and delineate some of the spaces and create even more privacy to her deck. Look at the beautiful cluster of plants. This is so pretty. I love how she did all white pots and they're not super tall that they block the beautiful view. Creating privacy is important because you are exposed to whoever is passing on boats. And one of the simplest ways to use is to use trees. They have a very sort of semi-tall tree on the right side, but I love that they actually included something that's engaging, and that is an apple tree. I go there and I pick apples and have them right there on the spot as I walk along the beach. I love things that are interactive but create a different layer that you can come from the seating area and get an apple and hang out. On the left side, they have a pine tree. This is a huge pine tree that must have been here for a really long time, but it almost, as you see, frames the view very simply. There's not a lot of leaves or branches. It does a great job of framing what you're there to look at. Many times we think we have to create something that's expensive or super modern when we create our own spaces, especially if you have a contemporary home. But here is super informal space with this four chairs that just create the perfect space to have a fire pit and just be connected to the water experience. This is a place where having a clear purpose is the main goal of designing the space. Your direction and your compass is what surrounds you and the needs you have on how to connect with it. Think of your connection to sound, to the space, to the air, to the sky. Details that remind you of all those areas, like bringing nature into what you build around you, will make you feel like you're part of the whole experience. 